Welcome to Lift Your Legacy. My name is Jacob Rupp, father, husband, and rabbi. And each week we bring you an inspiring person or message to help you unlock your inner potential and create change that will impact the future. Thank you for listening and let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited for this episode. It combines two deep passions of mine, uh, Judaism and Mixed martial arts. Now, for those of you that are not familiar, I'm going to define a couple of terms. There's something called mixed martial arts, MMA, which is a sport that combines a variety of different fighting styles. There are different leagues. Uh, The perhaps most widely known is the UFC, but there is another huge league called Bellator. And our guest today, Chaim Gozali, is a Bellator MMA champion. He's a fourth degree black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and is someone that has gone around the world representing Judaism, representing Israel, and is fundamental in building the culture of Bellator and MMA in Israel itself and promoting Israeli fighters. Now, as with most things Jewish and Israeli, uh, we were a little bit late to the party, I guess you can say, in the sense that there was not really a tradition of mixed martial arts in Israel. And thanks to people like Chaim and his son Aviv, who is one of the youngest uh, fighters currently in, in Bellator, this has taken off. And now the 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 movement has has been growing tremendously in its exposure and the amount of focus that Israeli fighters get and that this sport gets in uh, Israel. So we speak about a lot of different topics. How do you, the mindset of a champion, of, of a world champion, I mean, he, he's fought twice in Madison Square Garden. You know, how do you focus in on being successful? What does fear mean? How do you manage fear? What's it like to be the father of uh, of an up and coming champion? How do you cultivate that? Uh, what's it like to be on the other end to be a son who has a, as a career as a professional fighter? It's not traditionally what uh, what Jewish boys have been doing for I guess the last couple centuries. Before that, obviously, we have a, a rich tradition of warriors and um, and all around. How do you cultivate pride and? Be an, be an inspiration for, for the world Jewish community. So uh, we, we cover a lot of ground. I am thrilled. Haim is, is currently training for his, his next fight, which will be the biggest one of his career. Potentially, is, it might be his retirement. Uh, we're not sure yet. He's uh, 46 and has been training for over four decades. So that's very exciting. So with no further ado, I give you the great Haim Gozali. Ladies and gentlemen, As always, Lift Your Legacy is committed to helping you live a more authentic and meaningful life. That being said, if I could ask you to share this podcast with someone that you think would get value from the message, that would be fantastic. In addition, I wanted to make you aware that along with the podcast, I do offer executive coaching. I help people who are successful and highly motivated, who want to see extreme, or not even so extreme, maybe just a small change that in their life. I want to help them get to the next level. What does that mean specifically? Creating more peace in your relationships with yourself, growing your business, clarifying your career, And even if you need a little bit of help losing some weight or getting more healthy, I do that also. I'm not for everyone, but for those people that are invested in making their life better and taking the next step, I highly recommend you consider me as a coach for you. Now, how do you get in touch? Well, you found the podcast. I wanted to tell you also my email, Jacob, my first name, Jacob at Lift your legacy dot live feel free please to reach out there or on all any or all of my social media channels i'd be thrilled to give you a complimentary half an hour conversation to see if we might be a good fit to work together and now with no further ado i ask you to please sit back and enjoy the show ladies and gentlemen As always, Lift Your Legacy is committed to helping you live a more authentic and meaningful life. That being said, if I could ask you to share this, 
podcast with someone that you think would get value from the message, that would be fantastic. In addition, I wanted to make you aware that along with the podcast, I do offer executive coaching. I help people who are successful and highly motivated, who want to see extreme, or not even so extreme, maybe just a small change that in their life. I want to help them get to the next level. What does that mean specifically? Creating more peace in your relationships with yourself, growing your business, clarifying your career. And even if you need a little bit of help losing some weight or getting more healthy, I do that also. I'm not for everyone, but for those people that are invested in making their life better and taking the next step, I highly recommend you consider me as a coach for you. Now, how do you get in touch? Well, you found the podcast. I wanted to tell you also my email, Jacob, my first name, Jacob at liftyourlegacy.live. Feel free, please, to reach out there or on all, any or all of my social media channels. I'd be thrilled to give you a complimentary half an hour conversation to see if we might be a good fit to work together. And now, with no further ado, I ask you to please sit back and enjoy the show. I'm Gozali. I'm thrilled to have you on the, on the show. You are actually the first time I have been able to be open and, uh, and, and really combine two interests that I have, the, uh, the world of uh, mixed martial arts and, and, and Judaism. And interestingly enough, I think you are one of the very few people in the world who is an Israeli that's traveling around the world and is currently in, uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in, in, the, in the fighting world. So if you could tell the listeners a little bit about how you got started with combatives and your whole process through your career, what was that like? So I was like six years old, you know, back in the eighties, I think. So they came out the movie, the ninja, enter the ninja. So it's like the white ninja against the black ninja. I was a kid. I said, Oh my God, I want to be a ninja. First thing I did the day after I went to look for like a ninja place. There's no ninja place in the eighties in Israel. So next to my house, there was like a karate school. So I watch, you know, I look in the windows and then I see a, a poster of a ninja, you know. So I said, "Okay, this is a place for being a ninja." Where, where, where in Israel were you? Were you living at that point? I I live in Batyam all my life. Okay, Batyam, Batyam. It's next to Tel Aviv. Forty six years. Great. So I start to train karate. I thought so I'm going to be a ninja, but it was karate. And then, like seventeen, I went to the army. In the army, I went to the body patrol. Still continue to train over there. Continue to was train still, all the was time. It still, was it still karate? I, you know, it's interesting. Maybe you could give a little bit of background for those that are not familiar with just mixed martial arts in general and what the differences might be in terms of what you were training when you started with karate because the fighting world has definitely got a lot of prominence as of late and has become much more nuanced, yeah, I guess. The fighting world ch- changed like in 93. Okay. So with UFC when I started, it was, yeah, when the UFC came. When I started, it was like martial arts, karate, there was judo. In Israel, we only had like karate and judo, nothing else. No Krav Maga at that point? No, there was Krav Maga, but back then the karate was like, in the 80s, the karate was big in Israel. So there's nothing more to do, you know, so only karate. So when I went to the army, so the martial arts start to be more big in Israel, the Kamaikido and like uh, Krav Maga become big and, uh, and also Ninjitsu came, you know, to, to be a ninja. But I was in the army already, continue with the karate, but you know, like buying books of like Aikido and like all kind of martial arts, like interesting in everything. And then I saw there's a Ninjitsu place in Israel. So I started to train Ninjitsu also back when I was in the army. So, I was in the body patrol. It's a special unit of the police. Like after three years, I left the army and I continued with the karate, but back I, I went to the Kyokushin karate, you know, the, the art stuff karate. Uh, after the army, I won the first uh, tournament, the Israeli championship in karate. And like a week, I think, or two weeks after that, 
somebody told me, listen, I got a cassette of a karate tournament from, he didn't know what it is, from karate tournament from the state. Somebody give it to me to, you know, back then there was like PAL system and every country there was a different system. You cannot see, take a video cassette and see it in Israel or in the States. So he bring it to me like to change the system to see it in Israel. You want me to make you a copy? I said, yeah, of course, make me a copy. The guy make me a copy. I put it in a video. Suddenly I see a cage, like people fighting, you know, elbow to the face. And then I see like Hoist Gracie, take the guy down, submit him, take the guy down, submit him. Take the... Oh my God, I said, I have to study this. I went to the States. I went to the States. I went to the Gracie Academy in uh, Torrance. I was Hoist over there. Original. I tried. Huh? That was the original in California, right? Yeah, yeah, the beginning. I trained for a couple of, uh, couple of months and then come back to Israel. So like 96. Can, I'm sorry I to interrupt you. I, want, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask, did you find, have you always, at this point, were you like committed to, you wanted to be a fighter, a professional fighter your, for your career? When I, yeah, when I saw the UFC, first of all, all my life was like, I'm a fighter. But it's not like, you know, it's a different fighter. But now when I see the UFC, I said to myself, okay, well, I have to do that. So when I, after like, I came back to Israel after the tour and stuff. So I said, I have to go back, live in the States. So I went to New York. And in New York, I, opened, I said, I'm going to open the yellow page. You know, there's no internet, no nothing back then. I opened the yellow page and I see Hansel Gracie. He's, he's got a school in New York. So, oh my God, my cousin lives in New York. I'm in New York. You know, I have a place to stay. I'm going to go to Hansel Gracie. It's, a, it's part of the family. I went to Hansel Gracie. First of all, I'm a fourth degree black belt of Hansel today. I'm more than 20 years with Hansel. So this is oh, the big story. Tell me, tell me one, of the things that I, one of the things that I love to ask my guests is what is it like training under a master in terms of not just the, the techniques of, of, of fighting, but being close to someone and spending so many years with them and, and getting, you know, a fourth degree black belt, you know, in, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, how did you, what did you learn from him? What was the methodologies and some of the, the life approach that, that you- first, first, what I'm saying to everybody, Henzo made Chaim Gozali, you know, like his personality is the way he's teaching, the way he's talking, the way the guy, He's a special guy. Everybody knows that in the world. You know, it's not like a normal guy. It's like his uh, personality, like, carry you with him. You know, you become like, when you stand in with him, you become like him. You know, like, he inspires so many people, inspire you to be like something. And he made me the way I am, like the, the, the martial artist that I am, you know, to study like more than 20 years with him. So What's for me, it's more than a master, you know, it's like more than a teacher. It's like a mentor. It's like a brother. It's like somebody that. So tell me, tell me, I mean, the, the, I think for the Jewish world, it's still something that we're, we're not familiar with. What is it like, like the mindset that you have to develop, A, to go into a cage to compete? And in general, how does a fighter look at ch challenges in their life and, and things like that? After you, cut, you go into the cage and fight, everything becomes small in the world, you know? Everything, take it all easy, you know? You go into a cage, you're standing in front of a man, you know, it's only one of you gonna win, you know? It's, there's not, the rule is so little rules, you know? It's not like you have to, you know? So you have to be focused, you have to be mentally ready. So oh, also the mentally stuff, um, I have like a special uh, doctor that helped me, you know, every fight, like, like, you know, like I'm, I'm teaching my brain, you know, my mind to be like, like I'm teaching my body. It's the same. I'm so excited. So, tell, tell, okay. So you gotta, you gotta tell me a little bit more about what, what are you specifically like training your mind to do? How does it, like, what do you think about what's that process like? You know, everybody got, everybody got like, fear in his mind you know everybody's afraid of something everybody's like got something that bother him in the world you know i'm going to the cage i need to be focused 100 percent if one percent is not going to be there i'm going to lose and it happened to me like a couple of fights so i took i took a doctor he's, he's living in the states we're talking also in like in in the zoom all the time so he teach me how to take the stuff that bother you the stuff that scare you push it away we're not no? talking about like the fear of getting hurt or losing. No, 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 no. We're talking about the fear of 
not fear, you know, you co we call it the monkey head. The, 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 the head that makes you think too much. Oh my God, I'm going to get hurt. Oh my God, I'm going to do that. Oh my God, what am I going to do? Even if I'm crossing the street, oh my God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get hit. You know, stuff like that. People got a lot of issues with this stuff. We teach you how to take all this stuff and put it away and become a, like a, become like a perfect man to do your, your mission, to do your, to live your life and everything. With me, it's like more, you know, it's more hard because I'm a fighter. It's not like a regular sport. So we work in a ladder, but how to get to be focused two months before I'm getting to the ring and how to be focused in the ring. And nothing going to bother me. Nothing. I'm not going to think about nothing. I don't care what happened. I don't care about nothing. I have to be focused on the mission to fight. And it's, you know, to train the body, it's more easy to, to train the mind. I, 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 I love, I love that. I think because, because first of all, people look at what, what you do and, and your, your own skill and just the, the concept of, of fighting and they think, oh, I could never, I could never do that. But also this concept of what you're saying is it's even harder to learn how to kind of quiet down the, the things that are going on in your life. Are you, do you think that this is something that people can do? Is it something that people have to do? You in order to be really successful at whatever they're trying everything you have to do that yeah for everything for even a regular work you you walk in you walk about waking up in the morning you have everybody's got something that bother him everybody got fear you no know, fear doesn't have to be like fear from somebody to kill me you know fear from life a lot of people afraid from stuff you know so train the mind it's not only about fighting not only about you train how to become you train how to breathe. You train how to be focused on what you do. And this is success. Listen, I'm 46 years old. I'm still fighting in the cage. I got my, one more fight. I fought this year. This Wait, year that, I fought like four fights. Four so fights, that, it's that, crazy. That, that, the 46 thing is, is also nuts. But wait, finish what you were saying. So, so how do you, so what are some, if there's, I know that you spend a lot of time doing this. It's like, you know, I know that it's, it, you can't generalize and, and give over a whole thing, but what's, what's a technique that you actually use, you know, maybe as you're coming down to preparing for a fight or even just in general, when you're finding anxiety, you know, you, we, the, I'll tell the viewers, breathing. your son is, your son is also, a very, what's that breathing? Breathing. Tell you have me. to control your breath. You have to know how to breathe. And like we said, every breath I'm putting in, I'm taking like the good stuff. And when I'm taking it out, I'm taking out the bad stuff. So you're thinking about it when you're breathing. So like you, you know, you're taking the good stuff and taking the bad stuff out. But you have to focus. You have to be with your clothes, with the house, your eyes closed. And you have to imagine what you want to do, what you want to accomplish. You have to imagine it. And with the breathing and everything, it's become like, you know, something like round or something like that. A circle? Circle? Yeah, circle, yeah, I'm, circle, I'm, circle, 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 yeah. yeah. And then... Uh, so you say you're, you're visualizing a circle as you breathe. Everything. I'm thinking what I want to be, what I want to be successful with, and what I want to do. And I start with that. I, I start with that. And I think in like November, 2000, November, last year in November, I lost the fight, but I learned a lot of stuff, how to, how to get, to be ready for the next time. And then the next two fights I won, then, then, then after that in the Madison Square Garden, my last fight like two months ago, I won. And now I got a big, big fight, probably going to be my retiring fight in Israel. And it's going to be in front of like 12,000 people Israeli that come to see me. So I'm going to breathe a lot, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. How, for the, for the, for the, per, I mean, the, the idea of fighting in Madison Square Garden, like what is, what is that experience like? Are you, how do you tune out the noise and the, the idea of performing in front of thousands of people? And, and like, how do you, does that like figure into your mind when you're actually in the cage or you're just, you're completely present. It's crazy, you know. Think about it: Rocky Marciano, Muhammad Ali, yeah, Mike Tyson. You know, like every legend of fighting sport, every legend of every sport. This is the the, the place that everybody want to play. You know, suddenly I'm I'm fighting over there. So the first time I fought over there, I lost. 
It was the emotion and everything, you know, like Madison Square Garden. Oh my God, it was just fighting, you know, I didn't care. Second time I came over there, I said, I have to win. I don't care about nothing, you know? So I was more focusing. I walked with the, my Patrick, the doctor, the mind doctor, you know? And everything, I came focused, but it's crazy, you know? Cause everybody was Jewish over there. It's New York. <laughs> it, was, it was before the Shabbat. They give me, because I'm Jewish, so I asked to be before the Shabbat, it was Friday. So they make me like first fights that the people can come see me. And you know, it was crazy. Every place you go, you see, you are like Israeli voice, like Jewish voice. You see the flag, the Israeli flag and like people screaming in Hebrew, you know, it was crazy. They took, we took over the, the Madison Square Garden for a couple of minutes, you know, like 15 minutes, of my, uh, 15, five minutes of my fight. <laughs> you know, it was crazy. You know, after that, I'm like, going from place to place to take picture with people, you know, and everybody's like talking Hebrew. You know, it's not like American people, you know, Jewish people, you know, you know, thank you, thank you. We have to go back to Shabbat, you know, and everybody's like running, you know, it was crazy. But the fight was, uh, you know, like four minutes, so everybody go to the Shabbat and everything was cool. That's amazing. At, at, at what point was that the experience? Were you always very, um, I think that it, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing in, in a lot of ways because you look and there are a lot of fighters that are happy to represent where they come from, but was there a point in your life when you, when you felt like you really, because whenever anyone watches you fight, when they watch your son fight, you know, you, you come out with your Israeli flag and you're very, you know, you, your pictures with your tefillin on, on, on your Instagram. To what extent have you, do you think it's really important for you to show and represent Israel and, and, and the Jewish people when you go out in the, in the cage? Of course. The Jewish people, you know what we've been through. I have to show everybody we are strong. We don't afraid of nothing. I pride on my, that I'm Jewish. I'm going with a Jewish flag. I'm going with a Jewish hat. I have a Jewish star of David on my hand. <laughs> I have the Israeli Hampton on the other hand. I'm like proud that I'm Jewish. I don't care about nobody. nobody. I'm going to go inside of uh, Mecca and I'm going to say I'm Jewish. I don't care. I don't afraid of nobody. If people need to understand. Jewish people, and it's, not a, it's not like a weak, weak people. We are strong and we're going to stay strong. And that's what I'm, I'm showing to the world. So one of the things that I think would be very, would be very interesting to, to share is for now, you, you are a person, you're a fourth degree you know, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. Uh, you, you're, 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 a, you're a champion. You have you know, years and years and years of experience fighting for the average Jewish guy on the street. Let's say someone that does not have your, your abilities, that does, you know, they're, you know, because, you know, is, is concerned. How, how does one like cultivate that mindset of, being tough, especially again in, in Israel, you see that in Israel people are have a much tougher mindset. But when you come out and you're traveling around the world, how do you build sort of a proud and and no no fear mindset as as a Jewish person? The same, like I said at the beginning. First of all, first of all, go train in martial art. Know how to protect yourself. That's the first thing. Second of all, it's all in our head. If you want to be afraid, you're going to be afraid all your life. If you want to be strong, you're going to be strong all your life, you know. Um, I choose to be strong, you know. If somebody want to be, don't think you're weak. Don't think because we're Jewish, we're weak. We're not weak. We're strong, stronger than everybody, and we're smarter than everybody. So <laughs> people need to understand that. So if nobody needs to be afraid. I don't know the, the, the meaning of be afraid of somebody. That's the problem. You know, I was in, I started training when I was six. So, you know, I went to the army and then I continued to train. So I don't know how to be afraid of somebody, you know. I'm afraid from playing. Take me in a plane, and I'm, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm afraid. I'm taking a pill, I'm falling asleep. I don't want to think about it. I put in the headphone, you know, like special one that's control the noise outside, you know, but. That's interesting. So can, you, can, you tell me, can you tell me about that? Like when you. When you find yourself scared, so let's say you're concerned about being in, a, in, a, in an airplane. So how do, you, how do you manage that kind of fear? I'm taking a pill, medicine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The easy way. I'm taking a medicine. It's black my head. I fall asleep. I wake okay. up in the place. Amazing. So, the, the, the tell, tell me. me and airplane is a different story. You know? So I, 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 what's, what's also very interesting, I, I, hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll indulge me a little bit. One, on one hand, I think it's important. You, you're 46 years old. You know, I, I have friends that are, that are mid-30s and already feeling like they could never, uh, you know, they can't even walk around the block and you're, you're going to walk it and uh, have the biggest fight of your career. 
what's that experience like looking at a retirement fight? And this is something that you've dedicated, you know, four decades to. Do you think about the next step? Where, where do you feel you are going to be post your professional career? Well, so, and I want to ask you about your son also, but go ahead. So, so, so. I'm not retiring. The Bellator organization asked me to retire. You know, they give me like an office, uh, you know, job. So I'm ret- I don't want to retire. I, continue. I can continue, but I'm getting a job, a good, a good one, to be a promoter, Israeli promoter to promote all the Israeli fighter, to make the next generation, you know, make the dream come true. It's, it's so, so interesting because you have places, I mean, that was one thing that I, was, that I heard that uh, Conor McGregor was talking about, was that there's a very proud history of fighters in Ireland, but then nowadays in the UFC, like there's very few of them. Do you feel like in-, in All Israel, of them in Bellator. What's it, in Bellator? A lot, a lot. Yeah, a lot of Irish in Bellator, yeah. But what's Bellator it? is going to- to Ireland like twice a year, you know? So, so do you see that same thing happening in Israel now that there's people like you and your son that are out there? Do you yeah, see yeah, yeah, more yeah. gyms and, and you're going to see kind of more Israeli champions coming up? Yeah, first of all, this is the fourth event in Israel, Bellator. First one came like 6,000 people. The second one was like uh, 7,000. The third one was 9,000. Now, from the first time to the third one, we become another Israeli fighter, you know? So... This year, we had like Olga, Olga Rubin. She fought uh, for the world championship on Bellator, you know. Israeli, that three years ago, there was no event in Israel fighting for the world championship, you know. <laughs> I guess and, it sounds very, very Israeli of everybody. You know, you just start, start late and then win. Yeah, and then we have Aviv, my son. He's got a contract in Bellator. And we sign three more Israeli fighters. That's a surprise. You cannot say the name yet. That signed in Bellator already. So they're going to do the first fight in the, the November 14 in Israel. So, so now we got like six Israeli fighters that fight in, in the world, but in the professional, in the second organization in the world, Bellator, you know. So it's crazy. Three years ago, there was not even an event in Israel. And now we have like four, five, no, six fighters, not including me, five fighters. I'm, I'm, I'm retiring. You're, you're retiring. So five fighters. I don't know if I'm going to retire. He said he's going to retire. Who knows? Mm. Five fighters that fight in, in Bellator, you know, Israeli ones. So Bellator was like, took Israel and like developed the fighter, the, like put all the resources and stuff to make the, the sport grow up in Israel. So, so now you see that that's, you're going to see it in uh, November, you know. Okay, be a lot of Israel fighter. I wanted to ask you also about so you, your son Aviv is I think he's the youngest he's one of the youngest fighters in Bellator is that he was the he was the youngest fighter still today he was the youngest but his first fight was in seventeen and a half in Bellator. What is that? What is how do you do that? Like what's it what's it like? I guess a couple of questions. What's it like raising uh, raising a son? In, in, this, in this type of a world? Did you push him into jujitsu when he was young? Did he just want to be like his dad? What was that process like? So, so, so this is a story by himself. He, I put him in judo when he was like three years old. I know, you know, I'm a martial artist. I said judo is the best thing for kids. He's going to learn how to fall. He's going to learn to not protect himself, but he's going to be like an athlete. And back then I built in my house a gym and we used to train for competition in my gym. So my son was a kid, you know, like three years old. He was standing on the, you know, on the mat, playing with us. Everybody's doing a drill with him, you know, like everybody was like teaching him something all the time. It was like that. Seven years, seven years old. I don't want to train anymore, judo. I don't want to go. Okay, don't go. So he stopped like for, I think, six to seven, he stopped. And then we went to the UFC Expo. I compete in the UFC Expo, the jiu-jitsu competition. He came with me. All the family went. And he saw everything, you know, it was big. Back then they do the expo, like crazy one, you know, everybody, all the fighters. So he said, came to me like that, the kid. Father, I want to, I want to compete also in jiu-jitsu. So how how old was he at this point? I think seven. Okay. I think from six to seven, he stopped training. We get to Vegas at seven. I think, I don't know the age, but it was kid, small kid. And then he said, me, I want to compete in the jiu-jitsu competition over here. I don't know, but he didn't train. No, I want to compete. I don't care. <laughs> I said, you know what? Maybe it's a good idea. 
I give but over there, you know, back then also you can register in the in the on the spot. Today you, you cannot do that. You cannot come to a competition and register. You have to do it on the online. But I came. I said, okay, I want to register the kid. He went first fight. Pam, pam, pam. Triangle choke. I said what? He never took, he never studied triangle choke. He just saw <laughs> us doing that. Second fight, the kid was big. He's fighting with him. The kid jumped a bit, took him up like you know, like and boom, slam, slam him on the floor. But you're not allowed to slam. So they disqualify him. He took a second place. <laughs> I said, okay. I took first place, you know, we took a picture with the medal and stuff like that, you know, for and son. I think it's the first competition we fought together. Yeah, first, yeah. We fought like in the same competition together. And then we go back to Israel like after like a three weeks or something like that. It was Sunday. Suddenly I see him going with a bag. I ask him, where are you going? I'm going to the class. I'm going to learn uh, to the judo class. From back then, that's it. The kid was like study and study and study and want to be a fighter. I didn't need to push him. I didn't need to talk to him. I told him once, one, one time, you know, go to study in school. It's going to be easy than to be a fighter. Believe me. <laughs> and look at him today. He's got a contract in Bellator. He's living in L.A. He's training like uh, he's training in the body shop uh, uh, gym in LA with Antonio McGee, AJ McGee, a lot of uh, Bellator fighters, like world class fighters. He's driving every day, like one and a half hour to the training, one and a half hour back, one and a half hour, like four times a day. He's training over there, training jiu jitsu also over there. And he fought, uh, I think, in April, I think in April. He fought also in the States. He won after like two minutes. And now he's got his third fight in Bellator. It's going to be August 24. So, so I, I want to ask one, la one, one last question that I think that uh, a lot of, the, a lot of the, the, the people listening would want to ask. You know, the, the, the idea of a, a, you know, a, a lot of times we have this, this um, I guess you could say this, this idea that, that the Jewish parents are always concerned about their kids you know, getting hurt or kind of wanting to push their kids to be successful and all these kinds of things. So how did you manage to instill this d desire for success in your son? And how do you, do you worry about like him getting hurt or when he's in the fight, like do you just, you just want him to be happy. How do you, how do you work that out? So his first fight, we fought together in the same event. It was the first time that father and son fought in the same card. Never happened in the world of fighting. So I was in a co-main event, so he was like in, a, I think, seventh fight or something like that. I asked for people, I don't want to see the fight, I don't want to be involved. He's got his own coaches because we cannot train together for a fight because I'm training different style, he's different style. So yeah, I had my, my own coach, he's got his own coach. And then he's like, go to the ring, he come, hug me, give me a kiss and go to the ring. I went to the bathroom. I said, if I'm taking the guy to the ground, call me, I'm coming up to see. If he's standing up, I don't want to see. Because standing up, you can knock, you know, people knock out. So I'm like going to the bathroom. So he's taking it down. I'm coming outside. I see the fight. I think he's like fighting. Da, 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 trying to choke him. Suddenly, they're standing up. Oh, poof, I run to the bathroom again. <laughs> and they call me. The second fight, I was in his corner already. You know, I was in his corner. So it's different. So now I'm his coach telling the staff and I'm telling him the other stuff because I'm like the ground staff. The, the other one is the stand-up coach, uh, Antonio McGee. Uh, so it was different. Now he's training a lot. Uh, I left him like for two months in the States. I came like, uh, I just came like two days ago from uh, LA. I came like I didn't see him for my fight. It was two months ago. I came to New York and then go to LA. It was so big. I saw him like huge, you know, it's like somebody else. So then I see my son, it's so big. And like, I went to see him train and he's training like a machine. I think he's going he's gonna to be like, he's going to be the next championship champion of uh, Bellator for sure. In Amazing. a couple of years, but he's, he's on the right track. He's got good coaches over there. He's got good people that take care of him over there. And uh, I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to be on the line. Israel, LA all the time to see that everything is okay. And it's different, you know, because I'm coming from the fighting world, so I don't see it like, it's not like a father, like, who grew up in something else and then sees son fighting. So, oh my God, like my father, you know, see, my father never saw me fight. Never. And never saw me fight and he passed away before my career started again, you know. But my mother came to see me first time fighting in 2017. 
<laughs> what, so was, that like? what was that like for her? Listen, I'm going to the ring. <laughs> this is a singer sing the song, you know, like everybody's screaming my name. I'm like touching people, so I didn't see my mother. You know, they're on the... So I can't give her a kiss and went to the ring. I won after like 40... Uh, over there, I broke the... It was the short, yeah, second, second fastest knockout. Se se second fastest submission in, uh, in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah so... So it was fast. Nobody understand what happened. And suddenly the guy fell asleep. So it was easy. She never saw me like getting beat or stuff like that, you know. But for her, it's something else because she's, she, she's, she's not from this world. But I'm from this world. I know what is to punch. I know what people but, but I also I know what. Think and I this is the risk that it took. You know, you want to be a fighter. You know, you have to know. You can lose or you can win. You can lose bad. And you can lose nicely. And you can, like... Somebody can choke you, it's nicely, you know, okay, I tap in, but somebody can knock you down. Okay, I wake you up in the hospital. Yeah. He took his risk, you know what he wants, you know, I can just can't support him. And because I come in from the same world, so I don't, I don't see it like it's a ginger stuff. I, I, you know, it is, it's interesting though, because of what you said is that, is that when it's on the ground, it's something that you can watch and really appreciate. But when people are standing, then, then there's even, even from growing up in the world that you did, even the, the, the idea of, of, of seeing someone take a punch or a kick is still hard to kind of hard to watch. Um, so, so la last question, yeah, of course, of course. you have, you have hundreds of thousands of people now, you know, around the world, Jewish people that are able to now turn on MMA fighting and see, you know, proud Israelis, proud Jews, What's the message that you want the Jewish, the Jewish community that watches you and supports you and supports all these Israeli, uh, and, and God willing, there'll be a lot more of them, Israeli fighters and champions and stuff like that. What, what's the message that we want to take away? First of all, it's never too late to dream. You can make your dream come true no matter what age. And we are Jewish. We are proud Jewish. And nobody needs to be scared from nobody. Because we are winning, we all the time win all over the world. They try to kill us, they try to do that stuff, but we all the time coming back. So, people, don't be afraid and never too late to never too late to dream. I love it, Chaim. Thank you so much. How do people find Thank you and follow you? you? Uh, Chaim Gozali on Instagram, Chaim Gozali on Facebook, the same, everything on Twitter, everything. Chaim Gozali. <laughs> all good. Thank you so much, brother. I wouldn't want to wish you a Thank lot of you. luck and hatzlach in your next uh, your next fight. Thank you. Thank you very much. There you have it, folks. Another inspiring episode. If you enjoyed this, I ask you to please share this with your friends and to like us over on Rabbi Rupp through Facebook or on YouTube. And the more that we're able to get these important messages out, the more that we can really make an impact in the world. So I encourage you, please, to stay tuned. Uh, we have a ton of amazing speakers coming up and also to tell your friends about it. Thank you very much.